But despite pay gaps, education gaps, and citizenship gaps, temps have come to define our workplaces from the margin to the center in ways that Mad Men era secretarial temps, white gloved and beautiful, never could have imagined. This book is the history of that transformation, the transformation from the secure post-war world into the world in which we live today. And in many ways, as Temp shows, these people, the people who were left out of those good post-war jobs, the people who were women, the people who were people of color, who were migrants, the people who were left out become a rehearsal, their lives, for the rehearsal for the rest of us today. And as the century progressed, these other groups would not um, have the same kinds of protections as white men. They would act as transitional labor forces for new kinds of workplace models, especially in Silicon Valley. And so as the New Deal protections remained on the books, they were not renewed alongside the economy, making these so-called laws, these similarly, similarly uh, so-called rights, ever more peripheral to the everyday experiences of working Americans. Again and again, we are forced to ask the question, who counts? Who deserves security? Who deserves some certainty over where their next paycheck is coming from? And at the same time, and this is an important thing we need to always remember as we talk about the freelance or gig economy, we must not forget that even for those white men who had the good paychecks, who worked on an assembly line or in a mine or simply in a cubicle in an office, the work was dehumanizing, backbreaking, monotonous or tedious, but for all these kinds of jobs, soul-breaking work. Whatever the wages and benefits, humans should not do the work of robots. That kind of monotony and repetition is unworthy of the word human. And the challenge for the 21st century, I think, will not be defending our robot-like jobs, but discovering in what's valuable in being human. 